يقول راجع فوي رب سامعي محمد بن الجزري الشافعي الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبيه ومصطفاه محمد وآله وصحبه ومقرئ القرآن مع محبه وبعد إن هذه مقدمة فيما على قارئه أن يعلمه إذ واجب عليهم محتم قبل الشروع أولا أن يعلموا ما خارج الحروف والصفات ليلفظوا بأفصاح اللغات محرر التجويد والمواقف وما الذي رسم في المصاحف الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا متقبلا يا رحم الرحيم و الله teach us what benefit us increase us in knowledge in good morals and in good deeds يا رب العالمين so we continue by Allah سبحانه وتعالى blessings in explaining الجزرية the most famous poem in تجويد and today insha'Allah we'll finish the third section which is صفات الحروف and we reach verse number 26 in this poem by Imam Ibn al-Jazari rahimahullah ta'ala the greatest Muslim reciter and scholar of the Quranic recitations over history Imam Ibn al-Jazari rahimahullah says in line 26 في اللام ورى وبتكرير جعل وللتفش الشين ضاد نستطل So this is the last line in this section As we mentioned before the sifat of the huruf or the attributes of the letters are very important to make the letter correct and not to change the letter into another letter sometimes the sifa will change the letter completely into a different letter like ta and ta if you don't make the ta heavy it will turn into a ta and sometimes it doesn't change the letter into another letter but it reduces the beauty of the letter or the correctness of the letter according to the Arabic classical speech. So you have to learn those sifat. And we mentioned practically, practically, when you're teaching the little kids or when you are reading, you should focus particularly on how many sifat. Again, we keep asking you this question because I'm definitely going to include it in the test. And you definitely have to, to know it right away since you are teaching in the, in the Sunday school. You have to know this. These have to be always in your mind when you're teaching so that you teach correctly. So what are the main sifat you have to focus on? The first one is what? Heaviness. Right? Heaviness or lightness. The heaviness and lightness of letters is a very very prominent quality that you have to focus on. So heaviness or lightness. And the second one is qalqala. And the third one is what? Hams or jahr. Right? These are the three main sifat. What else? And we have, today we're going to cover the istitala for the bad, of course. These are the main sifat you have to focus on. The rest of the sifat is, is almost only descriptive. So it just describes how the letter is being pronounced or how some letters are being pronounced. Now, let's go to the second last sifa. Imam Ibn Jazari said, Rahimahullah, Qalqalatun qutbu jadin. In the previous line, Qalqalatun qutbu jadin. Wallinu wa un wa ya un sukkina wa an fataha qablahuma wa linhirafu suhiha fillami warra. So this word fillami warra, it follows it's connected with the previous line. Fillami warra. Now, wa bi takreerin ju'il. Means what? Dara has been made with takreer. Now he says, wa li tafashi ashinu. Wa li tafashi ashinu. This is sifa number what? Fifteen. This is sifa number fifteen, right? Tafashi is number fifteen, right? Wa li tafashi. Li at-tafashi means what? For the tafashi. Li at-tafashi means what? For the tafashi. If you say Lillah, means for Allah. 
or to Allah. Okay? So, lit tafashi means for the tafashi. He put colon means what? Means for the tafashi attribute, there is what? Ashin, only one letter. Yalla, let's come to the tafashi and to the definitions. As we mentioned before, always in the Islamic terms or in the Islamic sciences, the scholars, they mention the, the lexical meaning of the word or the Arabic meaning of the word. Then they talk about the technical meaning. Uh, for example, when they say sunnah, what is sunnah? Who knows in Arabic? Sunnah in Arabic, who knows? For example, the Prophet says, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al khulafa al rashidin al mahdiyin min ba'd. Sunnah means what? Way. The Prophet is saying, Stick to my sunnah and the sunnah, see? The sunnah of the khulafa who are guided after me. Means the four khulafa. Not all the sahaba are khulafa rashidin as some. One person was arguing that all the Sahaba are Khulafa Rashidun. No, they're not even all Khulafa. Khulafa are the, the, those who were in the leadership position. The Khulafa are four. The Rashidun, the, ra the rightly guided Khulafa, are four Sayyiduna Abu Bakr, and Sayyiduna Umar, and Sayyiduna Uthman, and Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anhum ajma'in. This is according to Ahl Sunnah. These are the rightly guided Khulafa. After those, they were not Khulafa. Okay? They were kings and sultans and whatever, but they were not Khulafa. Anyway. So, Sunnah is mean. Uh, sunnah means what? In Arabic. The way. Huh? The way. The way of the Prophet. We say the way of the Prophet. Right? That's sunnah. This is why he said my sunnah and the sunnah of the khulafa means what? My way and their way. What, is, what does that mean, their way? means their, their method. Their method of following, of following the Holy Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Okay. Doesn't mean we are limited. This is very important to understand as a Muslim. Doesn't mean we are limited, limited only to the things that they did. That's not true. That's not true at all. You cannot limit Islam to what the Sahaba did or what the four Khulafa did. Not even to what the Prophet وسلم, himself did. Because the Sahaba themselves did many things in the religion. In the religion. That the Prophet himself وسلم, did not do. So here we're talking about what the method. Yeah, you can never deviate from the method of the Prophet وسلم, from the main rules that he put or the method of the Sahaba in taking the rulings from the Quran and Sunnah but if you want if you say as some, some people claim but they themselves cannot apply that that you have to stick to everything every single thing that the Prophet وسلم, did if he did it then it's halal if he did not do it then it's haram that is ignorance that's very that is manifest ignorance in the foundations of, of the Islamic law. Because the Prophet, okay, the Prophet وسلم, did not eat uh, some types of meat. So does that make it haram? Of course not. The Prophet وسلم, in his time, there were only two adhan for Jum'ah. Now we have three adhan. Right? Yeah, some masajid, they, they just stick to two. But the vast majority of the Muslim world, three adhan in Jum'ah. Sayyidina Uthman added a third adhan. So if, if, if someone says, ah, you cannot add, you cannot do anything the Prophet did not do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we say, ah, so Sayyidina Uthman was wrong? He added an adhan on Friday. So now we can, we can explain why and how. But the point is what? The point is, you cannot deviate from the rulings and the guidelines that the Prophet وسلم, and Sahaba followed. Right? Not every single detail. Okay. And this is what, what bid'ah is. Bid'ah is what? To, to, to innovate something in the religion that has no foundation. That has no foundation in the religion or that goes against any of the, of the foundations of the religion.
or that goes against any prescribed thing. So all this we got and we benefit from the word sunnah, right? Now in, in the Islamic terminology, what is sunnah? Who can tell me now? In the Arabic language, sunnah is the way. What about in the Islamic terminology, in the technical term? You know sunnah? What is sunnah? You don't know what sunnah is? The second main source of legislation in Islam, what is it? What is sunnah of the Prophet Is every word, listen, remember, write down if you don't know, write down. Every word and action and approval of the Prophet Every word or action or approval by the Prophet and that also includes what includes his his akhlaq, his character, of course, and his physical description, his shama'il. Okay, that also includes his shama'il and his seerah, his biography and his characteristics, his his physical characters his characteristics or descriptions. All the, all of that is sunnah. Okay. Now sunnah in the science of hadith also it has a different definition from the science of usul al fiqh. So, but this is the general definition of sunnah, okay? So we say this is sunnah means something the Prophet Sallallahu said, or something he did, or something was done in front of him and he approved it. That is considered sunnah. Why? Because if he was there and he saw it and he approved, means what? Means it's okay, means it's good. Is that clear? That is called taqreer. Now let's come to tafash, yalla. So now you learned sunnah. In Arabic means what? way in uh, in the uh, technical term technically or in the Islamic terminology Sunnah is what every word action or approval from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi this includes also his Shama'il means his physical description and his biography now Tafashi who knows what Tafashi means Tafashi Fasha Tafashi means spreading spreading you know, if a drop of oil falls on your clothes, what happens? Is there a verb in English for that? Verb that the, the drop of oil makes on your clothes? Spreads? Huh? It spreads, right? That is exactly the fashi. See how the drop of oil, it becomes, right? It spreads in all directions. That is in Arabic, the fashi. So the fashi is spreading, spreading. They say fasha al-amr. This matter, fasha means spread, or rumor, spread. They use the word rumor, for example. Technically, what is the fashi? Technically, in tajweed means. In tajweed, it's the spread of the sound of the letter. Here, particularly, we're talking about the sheen, right? It's the spread of the sound of the letter in the mouth after hitting the internal side of the front teeth let's look at the picture and come back to the to the definition who can remind me first how do we pronounce the sheen how do you pronounce the sheen you can see the picture you can see the tafashi how do you pronounce the sheen How do you pronounce the sheen? Where does the sheen come from? From the middle part of the tongue. What do we do with it? We touch the roof, right? We touch the roof of the mouth. We don't touch it. If we touch it, what do we have? Huh? Jeem. If you touch the roof of the mouth with the middle part of the tongue, ij. If you don't touch but you bring it close, what will that sound be? Shh. If you bring it close but less than the sheen, what will that be? Ai. Right? Ai, that's the ya. All of them from wasat al from the middle part of the tongue. The ya comes, is the farthest. Ai. Ash. Aj. Right? So the sheen is from the middle part of the tongue without touching the roof. As you can see. 
see where the middle part of the tongue there now what about the teeth do we say ash sh, sh, sh. do we close our teeth ash The teeth are open, right? Ash, 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 not ash, ash, ash. So the teeth are open a little bit. So what will happen to the sound, to the air? It will touch where? It will touch the, the internal side of the, of the upper and lower teeth, right? As you, you see this air, this represents the sound or the air, right? This white thing. So as you can see, the, the sound is touching, the air touching the internal side of the upper and the lower teeth, right? And what's going on? What's happening? Some little coming out and what, what's going on with the rest? What's happening to the rest? Spreading. This is this gives it this sound, right? So that is that is the تفشي. انتشار صوت الشين من مخرجه حتى يصطدم بالصفحة الداخلية للأسنان العليا والسفلى. Now who can tell me is there like practical thing you have to do with the sheen? Like when the student is reading, he says أعو. For example, he says من شرلي من شرلي. Do you tell him like show the تفشي? For example, uh, show the tafashi. No, you don't tell him anything, right? Because if he's applying the sheen, the makhraj correctly, it will be, it will be, the tafashi will be as a result of the right makhraj of the sheen. But if he says F or S, then you tell him to fix the makhraj of the sheen. So if he applies the makhraj of the sheen correctly, then the tafashi will come automatically. Right, guys? Okay. So let's read that in English now. So tafashi is what? Subre the spread of the sound of the letter. Where? In the mouth. It's spreading in the mouth. After hitting the internal side of the front teeth. Means the upper and the lower. The internal side of the front teeth. This takes place in the sheen. We notice that part of the sound leaves the mouth from the space between the teeth. We don't say shh, shh, shh. We don't close the teeth, right? There, lit there is little gap. Ash, ash, ash. So the rest of the sound will, will, go, will go where? Or the rest of the air and the sound will go where? Will spread. That is the fish. Will spread in, in the whole mouth. Ash. Okay? So the other part reflects back to spread in the mouth. That is the fish. One thing notice on the sheen, we mentioned the sheen and the makhraj and the, main, and the common mistakes in the, that some people make in the sheen. One of them here, don't use your lips in pronouncing the sheen. Don't say ash, ash, sha, sha, ash, ash, ash. This is very common, okay? And it's a habit. Some people, yeah, you know, one drew their attention to that. So don't use your lip with the sheen. Always, always. Remember, لِلشَّفَتَيْنِ We learned that before in Makharaj Proof. لِلشَّفَتَيْنِ for the, for the two lips, we have what? لِلشَّفَتَيْنِ وَاوُ لِلشَّفَتَيْنِ الْوَاوُ بَاءٌ مِيمُ That's it. These three letters only, with these three letters only, you use the lips. وَاوُ بَاء مِيم أَوْ أَبْ أَمْ That's it. You don't use the lips with the صاد أص You don't use the lips with the شين أش أج you don't use the lips with any letter other than these three. الشفتيني الواو باون ميمو Any question? Okay, second last صفة and last صفة in this line ضادا استطل ضادا استطل ضادا استطل في اللام ورى وبتكرير جعل وللتفشي الشين ضادا استطل ضادا means ضاد, right? Why he said ضادن, not ضادن, or ضادن, who knows? Hmm? Why he said ضادن? Who knows when it is, when the, the word has two fathat, in which position is it? Is it in the marfu' position, means the, as a subject or nominative, 
or accusative or genitive case, which case is that? I mean, is it in the position of the subject or the object? Or position? Possession. Possession, right? Is ownership, possession, right? Which which one when you have two fathah, what is that? Is it fa'il? Is it subject? No. Subject will be marfu' would be dadun. Dadan means it's an object. So dadan istatil means means apply istitala to the dad. So the dad is in the position of what? In the position of maf'ul bihi means object. So make istitala to what? To the dad. Okay? So dadan istatil. Apply istitala to the dad. What is istitala? Again, in Arabic, istitala means talab al-tool. Istitala, these are three letters. Is, hamzat wasal and sin and ta. In Arabic, they always mean to ask for something. Example, istighfar means what? Ask for forgiveness. Right? Ask for forgiveness. Istirzaq, ask for rizq. Istamar, ask for building. Okay? Istibshar, ask for bushra, for glad tidings. Understand? Istitala, asking for lengthening. Okay? So, istitala means to lengthen. Okay? So, make this letter, which is the word, make it lengthen, lengthened or elongated. Okay? Make it elongated or give it the attribute of elongation or istitala. Is that clear? Okay. Yalla, let's remember together the makhraj of the bad. We made a whole class on the makhraj of the bad. You remember? And we explained in details. Alhamdulillah, there's one whole video about the makhraj of the bad itself. We explained with videos and with pictures and, and with all details about the Dad and why we're talking about the Dad and emphasizing on the Dad because the only letter that exists only in Arabic. Right? Do you remember? And this is why we said one of the names of the Arabic language is what? They say Lughat al Dad. the language of the Dad. There's an Arab nasheed, they say, uh, they say, Lisan al Dad yajma'una. The tongue of the Dad brings us brings us together. Means the Arabic language brings the Arabs together. Yeah, that's in theory. But in reality they're just going crazy against each other. Right? May Allah guide them. So a Dad is a very, very important letter that we all have to pay attention to, especially especially when we find some shaykhs in the subcontinent, particularly in the subcontinent, who insist on changing this letter and making it as a za or a za, which is not acceptable in any way or in any narration or in any reliable tajweed book. But still they teach it this way and may Allah guide them. So we have to get the knowledge about it so that we help them stop this deviation from the, the way of the Prophet and reciting the Quran because this changes the meanings and Imam Ibn al-Jazari mentioned the whole section in al-Jazariya we explained it in the first course if you remember distinguishing between Dad and Dha Imam Ibn al-Jazari about 700 years ago he made, a, he made this poem and he made a whole section to distinguish for people, for Muslims, the words that are pronounced with Dad and the words that are pronounced with, with Dha. And still some shaykhs, they, they're behaving as if they're more knowledgeable than Imam al Jazir. And then all the, the Muslim reciters of the past and of the present. And that is, that is a, big, a big sin that they should quit doing. Okay, let's see how is the Dad pronounced. First, before we go to the Istitala, you have to understand the Makhraj. So this is a review for the Makhraj. Who can remind, this, remind us the first thing with the Dad? What do we do to pronounce the Dad? What should we do? Which do we use the tongue or the lips? What do we, what do, what is the main part of, of, uh, 
the main organ of speech that we use. The tongue. What part of the tongue do we use in the body? Middle, middle, back, root, front, edges. What do we use? What do we use? The edges. We use the edges of the tongue. What part of the edge of the tongue we use? All of them. Very good. We use all the edges of the tongue. Right? All the edges of the tongue. We use them to pronounce the bar. Right? So suppose this is the this is the roof of the mouth. Okay. And here are the you see here? These are the the molars, the big teeth, right? The big teeth are here. And this is, what is this? The gum, right? This is the upper gum. The upper gum of the teeth. These are the, the big teeth. This is the tongue. These are the edges. So all the edges of the tongue will touch what? Will touch all, all what? Will touch all the, all the upper internal gum, right? And it will be like this. You see that the big teeth, the edge of the tongue will come like this. It's touching the big teeth from inside, touching their gum. Right? Like this. So what will happen? Will it be like this? Like this? Or like this? If it is like this, what letter you will have? You will have nothing. You will have nothing. Because everything touching everything. But it is like this. The edges of the tongue touching the upper internal gum. So you will have what? Like, you will have a gap in, in the middle, right? Now, that is the first step, guys. Up, that's what, this step means this. Up, up, okay? Now what should we do? What should we do? We make pressure where, we make pressure where on the far edges of the tongue, these, this far edge and this far edge, right? We make pressure on the far edges of the tongue. So we're gonna do up, up, right? Up, up, up. Now, because of this air that is imprisoned between the tongue and the roof of the mouth, and we're making pressure here, here, here on the far edges, what will happen? Up, up, the tongue will move slightly forward. Up, because there's a lot of air here. And you want the letter to move, you want the letter to come out. So what do you do? This slight movement is the istitala, right? This slight movement of the tongue under the pressure of the air that's in present between the tongue and the roof of the mouth is the istitala. So the, the, the tip of the tongue starts from here, right? And moves slightly inward, moves slightly inward. That is the sitala. I'm making it big so that you see like this. Okay, like this, up, 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 right? That is the istitala. What is the result of istitala, ya sister? Huh? No. That's the result of istiala. Rakhawa. Right? Rakhawa. Opposite of Shiddha means the sound is cut off, the sound of the blood is cut off or flowing? Huh? Is the sound of the blood flowing or cut off? Huh? Flowing. Do you say, see, that's a blood without an istitala. Huh? Is the blood like this? No. Because some people think the bad is like this, do you know what they do? So they're making it shady. And usually people, how do they get rid of the shiddah of a letter? By doing what? 
So this is why some people make qalqala for the dad, and that's a common mistake. They say, yalbu, which is easier for them. For them, it's easier. Yalbu, 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 right? That is wrong. One mistake. Another mistake, they do what? Hams. Some people, they make hams to the dad. They say, yalbd, yalbd, yalbd. Right? I, when you listen to many students, you will hear that, right? This is what I'm, why I'm mentioning it because I heard it from some students. Okay, so uh, you don't make hams, you don't let the breath go with the blood, and you don't bounce the blood. You rather, by this movement of the tongue, the sound of the blood will flow like this. Felm, huh? Felm. You can hear how it's flowing or no? Can you hear? Felm. You can hear? Huh? Felm. You can hear? That's the istitala, huh? Fadl. You can hear it? Fadlullah. Idrib. 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 Okay? Of course, istitala is applied in all conditions of the blood. Just like every sifa, it applies to all, to the letters in all of its cases, except for qalqala. You cannot apply qalqala except in the sukun status. Okay? So the blood is like this. Blood. Now, when you're moving your tongue, okay, when you're moving your tongue, the tip of the tongue, where should it stop? Where, where should it stop? Now, these are the teeth, okay? Suppose these are the teeth here. See the teeth? These are the teeth, okay? So the, the front part of the tongue or the tip is moving, right? Where will it reach? Maximum, where? The upper teeth, where exactly? At the gum, right? At the gum of the upper teeth, from inside, right? From inside. Alb, right? Alb. Now, what if someone let, let the tongue move more? Like this. What letter will, be, will that be? Huh? Look, the tongue became here and the teeth became here. What is this letter? The, the, huh? The. La? I said the. The? The or the, because they're making it heavy, so that would be a dha. So you don't let your tongue out in the blood. You don't let your tongue out. Your tongue should remain inside. Huh? Can you see my tongue? Al Can you see it? Uh, can you see the tongue? Al 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 Fab Walabba 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 See? That is the blood. Now, another common mistake. If someone said da. Da, da. What is this? What letter is this? Da. Huh? A heavy dal. A heavy dal. Barakallah feek. Why is that a heavy dal? What is the mistake? The current of the tongue is too far up to the gum. No. What's the mistake here? We said, do all the edges of the tongue touch all the upper internal gum? Yes. But where do we make the pressure? And where do we rely more? Where? On the far edges of the tongue. These far edges which is which is adjacent to adjacent to which teeth? The incisors or the molars? Huh? The far edges of, of the tongue are adjacent to what? Which teeth? The molars, right? So when you make the pressure here, um, um, that's the blood. But if you make the pressure here, the the Da, see, da, da, that will never be a bad. So, don't make the bad as a heavy da, don't say da, don't make it za, don't make it la, don't make it za. Because this sound, brothers and sisters, za, this letter, is a variant of the sad in Arabic. You understand what variant means, right? Yeah. Is another pronunciation of the sad in Arabic. Is not another pronunciation of the za, nor da. Da in Arabic is da, no other variant. And za is za, while za, za, this is called a sad that has the smell of the zai. It's called in Arabic the sad, a sad al mushamma zayan. Asad al mushamma zayan. The sad that has been given a smell of the zai, like a little of a zai. What is that? Za. 
and this is in some of the qira'at, of the ten qira'at. Okay? Like Khalaf and Khalad. Khalaf and Khalad, who are the two reciters of Hamza, Al Kufi, they say, Ihdina Zirata. Instead of Sirata, Ihdina Zirata. Okay? One of them, they, they have differences in Fatiha, they, they don't always do it. For example, they say, Waman Azdaku, mean Allah Hikila, Azdaku, Az. So, these brothers who and those sheikhs who teach the Dawd as a za, where did they get this from? So we, we as Syrians, Syrians, and you as Pakistanis or Indian, and him as an Egyptian, and her as an Indonesian, any person anywhere in the world, any Muslim, we all, whether Arabs or non-Arabs, all of us, we have to, we have to abandon our dialects. Abandon our dialects when it comes to the Quran. Even in Syria, some in some cities, they say "va," and instead of "da," they say "va." They say "va," but when you read the Quran, they don't. And if they do, they have to. They have to. Anyone who does that must quit that. It's forbidden to do that unless. You tried and tried and tried and you cannot. We say, okay, but we don't go and teach people. Just read by yourself and don't go and lead, up, lead us in salah. And you read the instead, wala dhalin, you say wala dhalin. Dhalin means those who are lost. Dhalin means those who remain. Okay? So, every single person, whether an Arab or a non Arab, we have to abandon our local dialects and try to learn the language and the dialect of the Quran as we got it from the Prophet وسلم, generation after generation through the connected chain of the trustworthy transmitters. Is that clear? Clear? Now, if someone cannot do it, okay, Allah, do, Allah will not punish you if you cannot, but He will punish you if you are intentionally showing ignorance and arrogance. Ignorance and arrogance and trying to teach the Arabs their language and tell them, no, that's not a dhaad, it should be a or za. That is ignorance and arrogance. And that is not acceptable in Islam. If we tell you and we explain to you, you should admit your mistake and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because these are not the Arabs who revealed this book. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's Allah's words. It's not our words. And let's read. Read for me. If you insist, read for me, read for me this ayah, Surah Al-Qiyamah. Wujuhun yawma idhin, yawma idhin, read for me this. I told one of the brothers the other day, how do you read this ayah? How do you read it? Surah Al-Qiyamah. How do you read this? Wujuhun faces, yawma idhin, please don't pass through the camera. You can go down, you can go beyond. Wujuhun yawma idhin nadira. Right? Means faces that will be on that day bright. Bright faces. From nadra. Nadar Allah umra. And the Prophet says, Nadar Allah umra. May Allah brighten the face of someone who hears my hadith and learn it and understand it and pass it to others. So may Allah brighten and illuminate his face. May Allah make us of those people. Wujuhun yawma idhin, faces on that day will be bright. Ila rabbiha, to, to, to their Lord, looking, nadira, looking at their Lord. So yalla, read. If you're going to make, you're going to say, Wujuhun yawma idhin, nazira, ila rabbiha, nazira. That doesn't work. So, this is just one example, just one example. Right? This is just one example. So, it's forbidden, it's forbidden, it's forbidden to do this. Forbidden to change a single letter or harakah in the Holy Quran. Especially if the scholars have been telling you and explaining to you and you insist on that. Okay? And no matter how much, how, how great the a scholar is in the Islamic sciences, sometimes, sometimes there's a scholar who has a BHD Okay, and not BHD, 10 BHDs in fiqh maybe, in jurisprudence, in the Islamic law, or in aqidah. 
but in reciting the Quran, he's not qualified. Do you understand? Do you understand? If someone has a PhD in fiqh, for example, or he studied with the greatest scholars in Islam, he studied the Islamic law, does that mean when he recites the Quran, he will recite, he, like he's licensed in reciting the Quran? No. If you want to, to master reciting the Quran, you have to, to study that. If you want to master fiqh, you have to study that. Do you understand? So even if there is a great sheikh or mufti, and he says, no, no, it's okay, you can say za or za, that's haram. We don't listen to anyone who says this. Okay, now let's see the pictures before we finish this. Let's, let's see the picture and explain again through the pictures what I mentioned. As we mentioned here, where is that picture of the... Okay. So as we mentioned, guys, the Dod, when we do the Dod, we touch this area in the roof of the map. Okay? What is this area in the blue and the yellow? This is the upper internal gum, right? And let's say, we can say the edge of the roof of the mouth, right? We can say that also, if you like. And we touch this area, as you can see, with what? We said with the edges of the tongue, right? The, the edges of the tongue. Now, why we have the blue and the yellow again? Why you have the blue, your yeah, sister, here? Why you have here blue and here yellow? This blue part is opposite to what? Look here, it's opposite to what? Which teeth? The big teeth, the molars, right? So this is where we put what? the pressure and we rely on that part while here this yellow area we only we only what touch with the near edge of the tongue that will make the ball as a ball right then what will happen look when we're touching as you can see here look the front part of the tongue where is it stopping look be at the root of the upper incisors is not going further right look here at the root of the upper incisor, it doesn't go more. If it goes more, what letter we will have? We'll have the. And look here, who can tell me why we have here so many arrows? What do they represent? I'm going to ask you such a question. What does, why we have so many arrows here? What do they represent? And look at this gap that I explained to you. You remember here? Did not I explain this to you? I, I said there, there's a gap, right? Yeah. Here? Did not I say? This is how it will be, there's a gap, right? The, the air will be imprisoned here. Look, this is the gap, look at it. This is the gap, you see it? So many arrows, why? Because the air is imprisoned here. Now what will that air do? It will push the tongue, right? It will make the tongue move, right? It's like this. The tongue will move a little bit slightly, huh? Slightly inward, slightly inward. And very important point here, guys, to make the blood easier, don't touch the tongue very, very tightly. It will be difficult. No. Give it some flexibility to move. And another thing, very important, this very important tip for you and to help others. When you start with your tongue, don't start right away here. Then there, there's no way to, to move it. So you start a little bit here. Then you... So, th so that it can move. You start here so that it can move. Okay? So you start here, then so that you can have a small space to move. You don't start right away here. That is the the dot. So istitala is in the lisani and the nutqid dot min muakhirati al femi ila muqadimati hai hata yulamisa rasul lisani usula thiniyatain al uliayin wadalik al hathir tahta tathir al hawai dhariti khalfa lisan. Any question so far? Any question? So istitala is what? Imtidad So some scholars they say it's the, the the extension of the or the movement of the sound of the blood until it reaches. Who can tell me what makhraj is there when it reaches? It reaches the lamb. It reaches the makhraj of the lamb. Say al al al. You see, this movement of the blood, it 
reaches the makhraj of the lamb. The makhraj of the lamb, not further, not the dha. And this is why we see, when you see dhaad and lamb, is easier. Because dhaad and lamb, you finish the dhaad, you start the lamb. This is why the word fadl is one of the easiest words with the dhaad. Fadlu, 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 because the dhaad ends and the lamb starts. And another thing, brothers, and this is a question I'm going to ask you. This is just to, to show that you understood. The Baad is the only letter where the Makhraj itself moves. Where the whole Makhraj is moving. Look at all letters like the Ba, Ab, the Ta, Ab, the Noon, and all the letters you find either they're like there's the connection between two organs of speech or the air is, mo is moving through a tight passage or something while the bad look the tongue is moving the makhraj itself is moving okay and why it is moving because of the istitala or that movement itself is the istitala now why is the istitala if I ask you why do we have istitala you tell me because of the air the pressure of the air that is imprisoned between the tongue and the roof of the mouth because all the edges of the tongue touching all the, the upper internal tongue. Clear? Clear? So all this is basically review for the thought that we already explained. Uh, let's read the rest of the notes I have so that we finish this. So because the tongue moves starting from the back molars, so its front reaches the makhraj of the lamp. Right? The tongue is here, the tongue is here, is moving from the back molars, moving to the front, moving to the front, right? Until it reaches the makhraj of the lamb. That is istitala. Istitala prolongation. Istitala, as you can see, is the slight, I'm exaggerating it just to make it clear, but it is, it is a slight movement, right? As you can read on the screen. Stitala is the slight movement of the tongue from the back of the mouth to the front part of the mouth under the pressure of the air that's in present between the tongue and the roof of the mouth. This slight movement will make the tip of the tongue reach the origin of the upper front teeth. It means the gum, the gum of the upper front teeth. Not further, the result of istitala is what you suspect? Bakhawa means the flowing of the sound of the blood. And we notice uh, that the blood, as I mentioned, is the only letter of which the makhraj itself moves, right? Now, if you let the tip of the tongue moves further to reach the tips of the upper front teeth, the result will be az azza, or azza, as some people do. No, not, not azza, sorry. The azza is different. The azza is, is is a heavy zai. Za. Za, za. The za is a heavy zai. Okay. We apply istitala to the dad in all of its cases, yet the sukun makes the istitala clearer. We mentioned that before. Avoid giving qalqala or hands to the dad. Yalla, let's read some of these examples. Fadlu. Yalla, read, repeat with me. Fadlu. Okay. So with the with the haraka, da, 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 da. There is a stitala, but it's less clear. Do, do, di, di, da, do, di. Fad, al, fadlu, walabda, walabda. فضلكم 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 فضلوا فضلوا اوكي ضرب ضعفين خضر 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 so you will find that the word will be easier with some letters it depends on the position of the letter if it's close like the lamb it will be easier فضلوا فضلوا if it is dara, it will be a little bit, a little bit more challenging. Fudrun, fudrun. Okay. As we mentioned, Imam Ibn Jazari, he made a whole section to distinguish between Baad and Dhaad. 
Do you remember? Who can remember that? what that section starts with? Huh? Wabada mayyiz. Huh? Who remember? Who remember? استطالة ومخرج ميز من الضاء وكلها تجي right who remember the beginning who who say 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 Remembers the beginning. وضاد باستطالة ومخرج ميز من الضاء وكلها تجي. Look at the screen. Remember this section we covered it almost last year, maybe. ها باب الضاد والضاء. The section of ضاد and ضاء. وضاد مي وضاد باستطالة ومخرج ميز من الضاء وكلها تجي. And the ضاد by استطالة and by its مخرج by two things distinguish it from the ضاء. Then he mentioned all the words that come with ضاء and all the words that come with ضاء. He mentions some words with ضاء and some words with ضاء so that you will know the rest of the words, right? Okay. وَالْضَادَ بِاسْتِطَالَةٍ وَمَخْرَجِ مَيَّزْ مِنَ الضَّاءِ وَكُلُّهَا تَجِي We'll come to this again and when we come to that section after two or three months and we're going to explain this again, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, you have to know, you have to know, in this world, uh, you have to know that the reliable reciters in this world today, you have to know them and you have to know how they got the Quran especially as, a, as an ijazah seeker you have to know so when some people comes, come with ignorance and they, they don't have knowledge in this, you educate them and teach them okay Sheikh Ayman Suwaid, I consider him the most qualified reciter in the whole world no doubt he is he studied with three Syrian shapes and three Egyptian shapes who are the who have the highest the highest qualifications in the Muslim world three Syrian shapes and three Egyptians he got certified from all of them not in one qira'a in the ten qira'at the minor and the major means from Shatibiyah and Durra and from Tayyiba means all the Qira'at that are mutawatir all of them and those shaykhs that he read to the Syrian shaykh he read to Shaykh Abdul Aziz Ayyun Sud he's the colleague of Shaykh Bakri my Shaykh may Allah have mercy on him and this is why when Shaykh Abdul Aziz Ayyun Sud Rahimahullah one of the great great Muslim scholars he passed away almost 30 years before Shaykh Bakri may Allah have mercy on him both they read to the same Shaykh Shaykh Al Hulwani when Shaykh Al Hulwani passed away who remained his two students these two more, most prominent students Shaykh Bakri and Shaykh Abdul Aziz Ayyun Sud right Shaykh Bakri and Shaykh Abdul Aziz Ayyun Sud Sheikh Abdul Aziz Al Yunusud passed away before Sheikh Bakri, almost 30 years. So, who had the highest Sanad in the whole world was Sheikh Bakri. Rahimahullah. So, Sheikh Abdul Aziz he licensed Sheikh Ayman Suwaid. And Allah blessed me and Sheikh Ihsan and Sheikh Hussein and many of our friends and some brothers from the world. In some of them in Kuwait, some of them in, in Emirates, some of them in Syria, they got certified from Sheikh Bakri. So Sheikh Ayman, uh, may Allah bless him, and we and Sheikh Ihsan, this group, we got certified from Sheikh Abdul Aziz Al Yunusud and Sheikh Bakri, who both took from Sheikh Al Hulwani. Okay? So this makes Sheikh Ayman Suwaid. This makes Sheikh Ayman Suwaid. And the students of Sheikh Bakri, they have the highest Sanad in the world. For, for me as a, someone who has been blessed 
by reading to Sheikh Bakri two qiraat. I'm in the two qiraat, but I cannot say uh, we are the highest in, in the ten qiraat. That would be deception. Or in the seven qiraat, that would be deception. But some of my friends, they read to Sheikh Bakri the ten qiraat, and I was there when they were reading. Every day they go and they read, right? At least in Hafs, in, in, in Asim and Ibn Amr, in the two qiraat. Now, why am I mentioning this? Let's come to the Egyptian sheikhs. One of the prominent, of the most prominent Qurra also that Sheikh Ayman read to, Sheikh Ahmed Abdul Aziz al Zayyat, because now some people quote him. This is why I'm mentioning this to you. Just like Sheikh Ayman mentioned this on TV on a program that is watched by more than 100 million people, 100 million people in the world. He mentioned this because it's important. I'm, I'm mentioning the same thing. Sheikh Ab Ab Ahmed Abdul Aziz al Zayyat and Sheikh uh, Ibrahim Ali Shahad al Samanud. Ibrahim Ali Shahat al samanudi These two of the two prominent sheikhs, Egyptian sheikhs that Sheikh Ayman got certified from. Sheikh Ayman is saying, this is how I read to them. This is how I got the blood from them. This is how they read it. Okay? And this is how we read to Sheikh Bakri. Not only me, so many students. So all of these sheikhs, this is how they got the blood from their sheikhs, from their sheikhs, from the Prophet And... The Arabs, this is how the Arabs say the, say the Lord. Very few towns, they say it in a wrong way. And they know it is wrong. Right? So Sham, Sham and Egypt, brothers, you have to know this. Sham and Egypt are the center of the Islamic Qiraat. The center. It's not because we're from there, no. The Prophet ﷺ says in the authentic hadith narrated by Imam Ahmad, he said, when I was leaving, I saw the pillar of the book taken from, uh, from beneath my head. I was sleeping and I, I saw the, the pillar of the book taken from beneath my, from beneath my head. I thought it would be taken away from me. So I followed with my, I followed with my sight, so I found it that has been taken to Sham. I saw that it has been taken to Asham. فَعُمِدَ بِهِ إِلَى الشَّام Asham is the Levant in, in, in the ancient English they say. The Levant. Currently it's Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine. These four countries are called Asham. This area around the Masjid Al-Aqsa, which is a blessed land, as Allah says in the Holy Quran, إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله. So the Prophet ﷺ is is mentioning this merit to Asham and its scholars. And in reality, if you go to to the ijazat in the Muslim world, you will find the scholars of Sham and Egypt, particularly Sham, they are the main ones there. So this. This is a fact that we have to be aware of and we have to, to, to realize this is the way those great scholars got it from the Prophet and the, all the Tajweed books, the ancient Tajweed books, they distinguish with the, between the, these two sounds. So we have to learn them right and do our best and teach the brothers who don't pronounce them right because that is not acceptable. Any questions so far about the blood? Okay, last Sifa. Now the section is over. Imam al Jazari said, this is the end of the section. Now there is one sifa Imam Ibn al-Jazari did not mention as a sifa in particular. He mentioned some things about it later, but it's important to mention it here uh, since it is a sifa, which is al-ghunna. So sifa number 17, which is the final sifa, is what? Is al-ghunna. Al-ghunna means what? Is the nasalization, is the nasal sound. And that's the ghunna. And just a sound from the nose. Now this sound, if you remember, we talked about it as a makhraj. Who remember? Then what? We mentioned it as a letter. Do you remember? In the makhraj al-huruf section, we said We said the ghunna has a makhraj also. And it comes from, or its makhraj is what? Al-Khayshum, the nasal cavity. How can the ghunna be a letter? Who remember that? 
And now we're mentioning the gunna is a sifa, is an attribute of some letters. So we have the gunna as a letter, and the gunna as a sifa, or as an attribute of the letter. The gunna as a letter, when is that? Because it's part of two letters. What are they? Noon and me. So because the gunna is part of the noon and the meme, is part of the noon and the meem. Imam Ibn Jazari mentioned the gunna as a part of the letter, so he said the makhraj of the gunna is the khayshum, is the nasal cavity. That's understood. We know the noon, how they produce the noon, two things. This is extremely important to explain ikhfa and ibhar, etc., and idgham to the students, to understand how the noon is done. Two, two parts. When you do the noon, you touch and and you touch the with the front part of the tongue. From the front part of the tongue you touch. What else? With the nasal sound. Two things for the noon. Two halves or two parts. One part from the tongue, one part from the nose. What about the meme? Also two parts. Am, am. The first part is from the from the lips, and the second part is from the from the nasal cavity, right? Um, um. So this is how the gunna or the nasal, the nasal sound is part of the noon and part of the meme. We understand that. Now, how he's, he, here's Sheikh Ayman saying here and so, some other scholars, they're saying the gunna is a sifa also. Why it's a sifa? How it is a sifa? Because we apply it to certain letters in certain cases and it has different lengths. Do you remember that? Sometimes we have long gunna, sometimes we have longest gunna. Do you remember? In this regard, because of this, it is a sifa of some letters. Or it's a sifa that is applied to some letters in certain conditions. So this is what we, we mentioned here. Al gunna or the nasal sound, Ya Sheikh, it is a sound that accompanies the noon and the meme in all of their cases. Can you say any noon without a gunna? No. Can you say any meme without a gunna? No. Every noon has a gunna, every meme has a gunna. But now, in the words, is the gunna of the noon and the meme always the same or it differs? It differs. It differs. And now we will see how it differs. We will see that sometimes it will be longest gunna, or akmal ma takun, and sometimes it will be long gunna, kamila, and sometimes it will be short gunna, naqisa, or sometimes it will be shortest gunna, anqas ma yakun. The timing of the gunna varies based on the status of the noon and the meem. Right? The gunna is part of the noon and the meem. So it has a makhraj, which is the nasal cavity. Right? That's what we mentioned. And it is a sifa when we look at its length. That is a question that I, I, I will definitely ask you in the test, right? Because that shows that you're really paying attention, that you're really understanding. So I'll tell you, when, okay, when do we consider the gunna as a sifa? And when do we consider it as part of a letter? Okay, you understand that? So the gunna is part of the noon, so it has a makhraj. Uh -huh. which is in a, and it is a sifa when we look at its length. Clear? Now, finally, those lengths of the gunna, what are they? Let's here look at this picture before we take the lengths. As you can see here, the noon here, this is the tongue part, where the tongue is touching, the front part of the tongue touching the gum, the upper internal gum, and accompanied with the nasal sound. That's the noon. While the meme here, look here, the lips touching each other with a nasal sound. So that's how the noon and the meme, they have, they are part of the, or the gunna is part of the noon and the meme. Now, who can tell me before, don't look at the board, look here. Who can tell me when the gunna is longest, when it is long, 
when it is short, when it is shortest. Who can remember? He explained this even like six years ago, five years ago. Who remember? Let's start with the shortest. When we say, which is shortest, you tell me. Or shorter. When we say, when we say, am, am, ba'ahum, or na, na, na. What about an, an? Which is shorter, an or na? Na. So the, the shortest gunna is when the meme and the noon have harakat. Na, nu, ni, ma, mu, mi. That is the shortest gunna. Now, if the noon and the meme they have sukun, sukun, and they are in the status of ivhar, they have ivhar letters after them, then what gunna will that be? An'amta, an'amta. Fadam dama, fadam dama. An'amta, an'amta, fadam dama. What one will that be? Short. So the shortest when the gun, when the, when the noon and the meme have what? Harakat. Now the short when the gun, the noon and the meme have what? Sukoon. With ivhar letter follow. following. Now, if we have noon and meme, Followed by ikhfa letter. Ikhfa letter. Ikhfa shafu. Which is what? The ba. Mean followed by the ba. Or noon sakina. Or tell me followed by noon sakina followed by by the ba. Which is qalb. Or noon sakina or tell me followed by any of the ikhfa letters. Any of the 15 ikhfa letters. Got it? Got it? So now the long gunna is when? When we have qalb or ikhfa shafawi or ikhfa. Am ba'ahum. Am. See, am is longer than an amta. An amta, right? An amta. Am ba'ahum. Yum bi'umum, right? Rabbuhum bihim. Min shadli. You see? This is long gunna. Now. So this is when the noon and the meme, they are in a case of, in a status of ikhfa or qalb, or ikhfa shakur. Finally, the longest gunna, when do we have it, guys? For sure, I'm going to ask you about this, inshallah. The longest gunna, idgham with gunna, or idgham shafawi, or the two gunna letters. When the noon has a shadda, or the meme has a shadda, or idgham with gunna. Noon sakina, or tanweem, followed by human letters, or meme sakina, followed by another meme. عم يتساءلون. عم is longer than عم بأهم. عم is longer than عم right. Also من يعمل فمن يعمل right. Also إن الذين so when the noon or the meme, they are in, in with shadda, or they are in a case of idgham, shafawi, or idgham with gunna, they have the longest one. Clear? Look, compare, let's read one ayah, compare the longest gunna with the long gunna. For example, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرْوَةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهْ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرْوَةٍ شَرًا See, darwatin sharwai, darwatin, that's ikhfa, long gunna, darwatin sharwai, idgham, sharwai, it's a little bit longer. See how amazing this, this book is, and how amazing the way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped us to preserve this book, even to these little tiny things. Even though they don't change the meaning in any way, still we are teaching you, as we learned from our sheikhs, even the length of those nasal sounds. 
That is a miracle by itself. And when non-Muslims, many of them, when they hear and they know this, they are, they are amazed. And many of them, they convert when they really study the history of this book and how we have it and how it's preserved. They have no, no, no escape but to, to believe that this is really from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the Creator who helped us to preserve it in this amazing way, letter by letter and sound by sound. Any questions so far? Of course, when you talk about idgham and idhar and ikhfa, we're gonna again mention this again. So this was the summary for that. Let's read it one. Let's read it now from the screen before we conclude. So the gunna as a sifa, as we mentioned, it will be considered as a sifa when we look at its length. Professional tajweed note: the gunna should be the longest when when they are merged with the two letters of gunna, idgham with gunna and idgham shafal. So al mudghamatayn when al nun wal mim mudghamatayn. Now it is long gunna means a little bit shorter when they are hidden means in the case of ikhfa with ikhfa qalb and ikhfa shafal and it will be short when they are clarified means what means what ibhar with ibhar and ibhar shafal and shortest with meme or noon with ha now the, these lengths of the gunna how long the gunna will be? Now in the Tajweed colored Mus'haf, and this is one of the notes, inshallah, I hope uh, I will have the time to mention it to the, to the engineer, the brother who, who was working, who worked on the Tajweed colored Mus'haf. They put in the Tajweed colored Mus'haf, the gunna is two harakat. That is not right. And many teachers, they say the gunna is two harakat. Well, which gunna? Which gunna? Now if you look at the Tajweed Mus'haf, they say the gunna harakatan. Two harakat, the gunna. Which gunna, sir? Is the gunna of idgham shafawi equal to the gunna of, of ikhfa? Are they equal? Of course not. So how you say it's har two harakat? Which gunna is two harakat? That's number one. Number two, who said it's two harakat? Two harakat means what? Uh, that's two harakat. Means two fathat. Two harakat, two fathat, or two dhammat, or two kasrat. Uh, uh, that's two harakat. U, U. E, E, that's two harakat. A, U, E, that's two harakat. A, that's two harakat, right? Or U. Now, you tell me, when I say, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ Is that equal to A? فَمَنْ Tell me. Is that equal? It's not. It's not. So, غُنَّ is not measured by harakat. Got it? I'm going to ask you definitely about this, inshallah. Ghunna is not measured by haraka. Ghunna is not measured by the finger. Ghunna is received by the oral transmission. You have to learn its time from the teachers. So the length of the ghunna can be learned correctly only from the skillful reciters. They are not measured by harakat and they vary from one speed to another, from one type of reading to another. So they vary from one speed to another. They vary from, let's say first, from one ruling to another. One ruling to another. Because the ghunna of ikhfa is different from the ghunna of idgham. Ruling to another. And from one speed to another. Means from one type of reading to another. Right? When you're reading, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Deen the length of the gunna in this speed, of course, it will be shorter than Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, etc. It will be different. So it differ, differs with the speed of the reading. It differs with the ruling of the, the, the noon. Is it idgham or ikhfa? It differs. So you cannot say it harakat. So that's a common mistake. May Allah help us to teach people and guide them the right way. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ask me if you have any questions.